Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about something, um, I would say, interesting and creative um, in trigonometry, uh, which is related to trigonometric series. Now, series, as we know, is basically a sum of certain members. Now, trigonometric series is obviously is when these members represent certain trigonometric function of some arguments. So, just as an example again, this would be an example of trigonometric series. Well, What's interesting about um, these is that um, there is actually an interesting practical um, usage of these things. You see, sine and cosine functions, they represent oscillations. So whenever certain oscillations are added together, for instance, you have some source of radio frequencies and another source of radio frequencies, they are actually somehow combined. Um, now, let's just forget about all these practical issues and let's concentrate on mathematics. Um, what I would like to present today is one particular problem related to uh, trigonometric series. And what's interesting about this problem is it's on the border between um, trigonometry and algebra and geometry, if you wish. Um, and it's using this connection between trigonometric functions and complex numbers. So, let me just present you the problem, and uh, you'll judge yourself whether I'm right, actually, to be quite excited about what kind of a problem this actually is. Um, okay, so here is the problem. Let's say you have to summarize sine of phi plus phi plus some delta plus sine of phi plus two delta plus etc plus sine of phi plus What's the last one? N minus 1 delta. So I have N members from no delta to N minus 1 delta added to original uh, angle phi. Now, absolutely similar can be a cosine But actually, it's one problem. Uh, I'll combine them together. Now, there are different ways to solve this problem. How to find this particular sum, let's call it S sine or S cosine. Um, I will offer the way, the methodology, which I consider very interesting very creative and uh, somewhat, well, I'm not afraid of this word beautiful in this particular case. That's one of the one of the things in mathematics which definitely can be beautiful, but to reach them you have to really accumulate a certain amount of knowledge to be able to use it. So how can I solve this particular problem? How can I express this sum in a more concise way? Here is the way which um, I suggest. And again, this is not the only way. Obviously, there are others. But this I particularly like. Let's just recall that any uh, complex number uh, 
let's say we have this complex number. It can be expressed geometrically at, as a point with coordinates x and y. Right? Now, you remember that this distance from the origin is called the modulus, right? Now, let's consider only um, complex numbers on the unit circle. So those complex numbers with modulus equal to 1. Now, modulus is obviously x squared plus y squared in this case. So x squared plus y squared equals to 1. That's the numbers which we are considering. Now, every point on the unit circle can be represented by its angle phi, right? With uh, an x-axis. And at the same time, there is a definition that um, uh, abscissa and origin uh, of this angle phi are um, abscissa is cosine phi and origin is sine of phi. That's by definition of cosine and sine. So if this is an angle phi, this point belongs to a unit circle, then this particular piece is equal to cosine of this angle and this particular piece is equal to sine. Which means that x is equal to cosine and y is equal to sine. So I can always put this. So any complex number with a modulus 1, which lies basically on the unit circle around the origin, can be expressed in this way, where phi is an angle, which radius to this point makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. All right, so I just reminded you this. I obviously talked about this in the corresponding lecture. Okay, that's one thing. Now, another thing is, let's, uh, le let's say that I have two different complex numbers. This is one, and this is another. Both of them are on the unit circle. Both of them have modulus 1. Now, obviously, their product also has modulus 1, because the modulus of the product of complex numbers is the product of modulus, so it's 1. Now, where exactly this particular uh, product be on this unit circle? So if this is angle uh, phi 1, this is angle, let's say, phi 2, where exactly is the product of these two numbers b. Well, let's just multiply them, right? Um, I'm basically repeating something which I have already um, uh, presented to you in the corresponding lecture about the uh, connection between complex numbers and, and trigonometry. But anyway, let's just derive this again. I mean, I don't mind to derive it. So multiply these two things. So what will be the real part this will be cosine by cosine, and also sine by sine, because i squared would be equal to minus 1. So the real part of the product would be cosine phi 1 times cosine phi 2 minus sine phi 1 sine phi 2. What will be, what will be the complex, uh, the imaginary part, coefficient with imaginary part? i times. Uh, sine phi 1, but cosine phi 2, right? Sine phi 1, cosine phi 2, plus sine phi 2, cosine phi 1. Now, we immediately recognize that this is a formula for a cosine of a sum of two angles, and this is the formula for a sine of, of sum of two angles. So basically, what you can say is that z1 times z2 is equal to cosine of their sum plus i sum, sine of their sum. 
So that's all as a kind of introduction to the methodology which I would like to, to present you. Now this is all basically the old knowledge which we all know about. Whenever you are multiplying two complex numbers with the modulus 1, their product would be uh, also uh, uh, the, the complex number of modulus 1, and the angle would be equal to the sum of angles. In some way, by the way, it, um, it resembles logarithms, if you remember. Logarithm of the product is equal to sum of logarithms. Here is actually the same thing. Angle of the product is equal to sum of angles. In some way, it's similar, if you wish. All right, so, know, know, knowing this, I would like to use this particular feature for the following purpose. Let's you one complex number be uh, cosine phi plus i sine phi. This is one complex number which I am talking about. Another complex number v is cosine of delta plus i sine of delta. Two complex numbers. Now, using these two complex numbers, what will be u times v? Well, if I multiply one complex number with an angle phi by another with an angle uh, delta, I will have a complex number with angle equal to, e to, to, to some of these angles, right? What if I will multiply again by v? This by v. Again, my angles will uh, will be added together. Obviously, if I put the third uh, power of 3, it would be 3, and if I will have power of n minus 1, <coughs> I will have cosine phi plus n minus 1 delta plus i sine phi plus n minus 1 delta. Looks familiar, right? The real part of these numbers is equal to my uh, my sum of cosines, and the imaginary part equals to the sum of sines. So let's just sum them up together. So I'll sum u and all these guys. So what I will have: cosine, cosine of uh, phi plus delta, phi plus uh, two delta, etc. Phi plus n minus one delta. So this would be s cosine plus i sine. Sorry. S sine. Well, that's what I will have on the right side. What will I have on the left side? What is u plus uv plus uv squared, etc., plus u to the v to the power of n minus one? Well, obviously it's a geometric progression, and we know how to sum geometric progression, right? Well. For those who don't remember the formula, and that actually includes myself, let's derive it. So if you have s equals to u plus uv plus uv squared plus etc. plus uv to the power of n minus 1, it's capital N, then I multiply this sum by v. So v times s equals to u times v would be uv, uv times v would be uv squared, and 
and the last one would be whenever I multiply this by V, I will have U V N, U V to the power of N. Now, if I will subtract them, these members will all be reduced because I'm subtracting. The only thing which will be remaining is this and this, from which I can derive that S is equal to U V to the power of N minus 1 divided by, if I subtract this, would be ds times uh, minus s, it's v minus 1s, right? So I divide it by v minus 1. So this is my formula. And that would be on the left. I don't need this anymore. All I need is this formula, where u is a cosine phi plus i sine, and v is cosine delta, right? So my result would be cosine phi plus i sine phi. This is u. Cosine phi uh, delta, sorry, delta. That's V plus I sine delta to the power of N minus 1 divided by cosine delta plus I sine delta minus 1. That's how we use this formula. And this is, as I was just saying, it's S cosine plus I S sine. So, almost done, except, I mean, I can probably multiply something without any problems, except I have to raise to the power of N, right? But that's exactly the same as we did before, because what is this? Well, we are multiplying one complex number with an angle delta by itself, n times, right? So whenever we multiply it once, if I do cosine delta plus i sine delta, if I will multiply it by itself once, what will I have? Well, whenever, whenever I multiply two different complex numbers, which both have modulus 1 and angles uh, such and such, angles are added together, right? So, cosine 2 delta plus i sine 2 delta. Now, if I will multiply it again by the same number, I will have 3, right? I will multiply this by another cosine plus i sine. It would be 3. So, if I, if I multiply it n times, obviously, I will have And that's what cosine delta plus i sine delta to the power of n is. So that's how I can put it here. And my formula would be n delta, n delta. Now, is that the end of it? Well, not quite, because I have derived a complex number, and this is a representation. If I will be able to represent this, which is a complex, complex number, in the form like A plus BI, this, then I can say that A is S cosine, and B is S sine, right? Now, this is a problem, but it's a technical problem. There is nothing creative about this. All I have to do is really do the multiplication and division, and I know how to do multiplication and division in complex numbers. Just as, a, as an example, I mean, if you, if you really want to know what, for instance, you have to do if you have to 
multiply this by this. Well, you all know that the real part would be AC, and BI times DI would be BGI squared, which is minus BG, so that would be the new real part. And uh, uh, imaginary uh, coefficient would be BC plus AD. So that's how you multiply, and you get separately real part and the imaginary part. Now, we want to, do, to, to divide something. Well, that's easy too. If you want to divide A plus BI divided by C plus DI, all you have to do is multiply by, uh, how is it called, conjugate or something like this, C plus ID, ID. Oh, I'm sorry, it's minus. Let's conjugate. Now, what will be in the denominator? C squared plus D squared, right? I times I, it's I squared, which is minus 1, and minus. So it would be C squared plus D squared. That's the real part. Imaginary part would be CD and minus CD. It will be 0, right? So here I will have A squared plus C squared. Now, on the top, I will have the real multiplication, which is AC. Uh, plus BD, right? BD I square and minus, right? Uh, that's the real part, and the imaginary part would be BC uh, minus AD, something like this. Now, but this is real, so I can actually divide it separately. So it's a AC plus BD divided by a squared plus c squared. So that's my real part, which is this. And imaginary part would be this. Which is this. Because now, if I have two complex numbers, both are represented in a normalized form, the real part is equal to real, and complex equals to complex. So I would like to finish here I don't want to really do all this transformation, multiplication, division, etc. Uh, uh, on the board. But what I have done, I put in the notes for this lecture on unizor.com, which is on the right from the video, all these calculations. So if anybody is really interested, and I do suggest you to go through these calculations, no matter how tedious they are. I mean, they are kind of tedious because the formulas will be big, etc. And not, not very exciting. But I think it's a good practice to go through these uh, uh, calculations and derive the formula in its final, uh, in its final form. So, <clears throat> that's one way of doing this thing. I might actually suggest some other ways in some other examples of doing exactly the same thing, but without using the complex numbers and the geometric sequence, etc. I think I wanted to start with this because that's what really opens up completely the whole mathematics as, as, as a field where everything is somehow interrelated. Here we have trigonometry and complex numbers and algebra of... Uh, um, geometric uh, uh, series combined together, which is a rare occasion, and that's why I think it's very important to understand. The more you know, the more you see connections between different things, and that's not only the math, it's just in the world as well. You know this, and you know that, and it's not really separate facts. Somehow everything is related in this world. <laughs> that's philosophy. So, um, anyway, uh, I think it was an in interesting lecture. Again, I do suggest you to go through calculations yourself and derive from this the final formula. And again, if, uh, if you would like to go with my calculations on the uh, website, on the unizor.com, and everything is um, in the notes for this lecture. Thanks very much. I hope it was interesting, and uh, good luck.